Hello, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Women's Basketball. Yet another episode. Thank you so much for making Locked On Women's Basketball your first or your last listen of the day. We're so excited to be here with Aya Abdeen. Talk a whole bunch of women's hoops and even talk about her special interaction with Diana Taurasi a couple years back. <laughs> so we're going to get all into it this edition of Locked On Women's Basketball. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Man, that intro gets me right every time. So excited to be here with Io. We have a lot to discuss. I have my WNBA shirt on. She has her together. Everyone watches Women's Sports shirt on. It is it's so been selling out like quickly. Like it's crazy. It has been selling out. And it's true. And we're going to talk about why everybody is watching Women's Sports, which we all know. You listeners at home know why we do it. First up, we're going to have a WNBA season preview. We've got a lot of key players that are going to be missing this, this season. Interesting. Aya is going to talk all about. And we're also going to discuss college injuries and how rough it's been for certain teams. And then we're going to dive into Diana Tarazi and Aya together. I'm Gigi Spear, WNBA beat reporter and social media correspondent for the next. And Aya Abdeen is a reporter for the next and host of Wonderful World of Women's basketball today's episode is presented by prize picks the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports go to prizepicks.com slash locked on nba and use code all lowercase locked on nba for a first deposit match up to 100 dollars all right i first thing we want to talk about is all these people that are going to be missing from the WNBA landscape and that you've gotten the pleasure of writing about a couple of them. Today, it was just announced that Aneka will not be returning to LA. So that's huge news that we're going to wait to hear more on. Shocker, right? So yes, about if you want to talk about that to start, or you could talk about all the other work that you have reported on this season and this preseason and before the season even starts already. Honestly, the the news of Neka Ogumike leaving the Los Angeles Sparks kind of shocked me. Like, when I found out about that, one of the questions that I would consider is what will Los Angeles do in the offseason, especially they have the number two overall pick in the 2024 draft. And they had a lot of changes since losing to the Connecticut Sun in the second round of the 2020 season. Like, I'm sorry for the Sparks fans that have to... Think about flashbacks to that before Candace Parker and Chelsea Gray left to win championships with Chicago Sky and Las Vegas Aces. Not to mention that they are a part of the the two-peat. So seeing what Los Angeles has gone through since then, like missing their playoffs for three straight times, there has been like a lot of questions on what could what could happen and especially especially they added in new general manager. They had Cameron Bryant for a little bit where she used to work with Seattle and then now she has Reagan Pebbly, I believe, taken over as new general manager and Kurt Miller as a head coach. It's worth mentioning that Miller used to coach for the Connecticut Sun for a long time. Um, there has been like a lot of like questions surrounding what will they do next after the departure of NECA Ukumike. They could keep an eye on on prospects like Cameron Bring or Paige Beckers. Not to mention that Brink is a prospect from Stanford. So that could be an interesting ad. Yeah, you have that that California tie-in. And it is crazy to think about. They had a super team on their hands, like you mentioned. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, you've been covering women's basketball for so long. Do you think it, it just takes one of those key players to leave and then people kind of the, – the team might – be kind of giving up in a way. Do you think that's what happened here? And that's what Nick is too. She's that thinking, could be something. Mm-hmm. 
honestly, like after Los Angeles, uh, after Los Angeles, they were so close to making the playoffs last year, but the tiebreaker to Chicago, like kind of hit them through a certain way. So I think that it might, that it might be interesting to like think when it comes to uh, what Los Angeles could be doing or could the number two overall pick fix these types of things because they were projected to have the third overall pick in this upcoming draft, but they ended up getting the two overall pick. And then, and then now with NECA leaving and potentially Jordan Canada, she was called by the team um, last Saturday. Mm-hmm. That's going to be interesting to like see how, how the roster could, could change. Especially they have Azaray Stevens, a member of the 2021 championship team with the Chicago Sky. So could they build around a two overall pick or could they pair it up with Azaray Stevens? That could be like a good question. Ooh, yeah. I I wonder honestly how it would come out. And it's so interesting this year with the draft too because you have so many players that could come in and start playing at the W level – and I know, I know it's tough. It takes time either way, but I'm saying a player that could come in and you could somewhat expect immediate impact. And the way that I could see it is that happens in college all the time. Freshmen come in, Juju comes in at USC and she's one of the star players. So I feel like with having such a high pick in the draft, this departure, of course, is heartbreaking and it could shake up a lot of things across the league. But would you say your overall optimistic for the Sparks future for this upcoming season? It's going to be an interesting question to consider because back then when there was a Lynx and a Sparks rivalry in 2016 and 2017, which was one of the best rivalries in WNBA history, you can see how Minnesota Lynx, they went through like a, a lot of years of rebuild, but look where they're at. They were just in the first round of the playoffs last year and took Connecticut Sun just to three games in the first round. And they bought in Kayla McBride for a contract extension. So like for Los Angeles, just for like the Sparks fans who are losing hope, just think about what the youngsters could impact because if they get either Brink or Beckers, that could be, or even both. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That could be like, that could end up really well because hope because like they have they are one of the most successful franchises in WNBA history with Lisa Leslie and Kenneth Parker and Nekka Ogunbike, but adding in the number two overall pick could be could be something to keep an eye on. Absolutely, and they have the twelfth overall pick, which they acquired from Las Vegas. And so you were at a draft party this year, draft watch party in Phoenix, yeah. right? Yes. Okay, so what was the crowd like when it was announced that LA actually would be getting the second overall pick? So there, after they found out that they would get the third overall pick, they they sounded with like disappointment. And uh, for Los Angeles, they were che- it's funny to say, but they were cheering when Los Angeles got the second overall pick because because knowing that it would go to Indiana, mm. they. Like there has been like an interesting rivalry between Phoenix and Los Angeles. And one of the rivalry teams is Los Angeles for Phoenix. So it was pretty interesting, interesting to witness the fans cheering, cheering during the draft lottery party because, because they were worried that Los Angeles would get first overall pick, but it actually ended up with Indiana. Absolutely. Interesting to witness. Yeah. And then you're there and you get to see the rivalry in action. Listen, we have a lot more to discuss across the women's basketball landscape. This episode is also presented by FanDuel, and we want to encourage everybody to check out FanDuel. Wait, actually, sorry, one second. Yeah. <laughs> and today's episode is presented by Grammarly. When it comes to writing, Grammarly is there to support you from start to finish. With one click, you can easily brainstorm, rewrite, and reply with suggestions based on your content and goals. Go to Grammarly.com slash podcast to download for free today. Also, today's episode is presented by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code all lowercase locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to 100 dollars 
And we want to encourage everybody to check out the other Locked On Network. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. This is crazy. Locked On Sports Today is here for you for 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right, Aya, we have a lot more to talk about. And real quick, I don't want to miss the other news that happened across the W this year. There's some people that retired. Jasmine Thomas, we could talk about her. And you wrote that mm -hmm. article. So is this something that fans were respecting for or expecting for her to, to step away at this time? Especially after after Jasmine Thomas suffered an ACL injury in 2022, like in her last season with Connecticut. And, you know, Thomas is one of the best ballers, like in the guard position. And she was also a part of the Connecticut Suns finals run in 2019. I was like kind of surprised to see Thomas retire and move into a position with the Dallas Wings, which is a great addition for the, to the Wings coaching staff. Like mm -hmm. I was really fascinated to see, to see how it could work for, sorry, for, uh, for Dallas, because they have really good ball handlers as like a, a Rike. And then they also have the fifth overall pick in this year's draft. So it's going to be fascinating to see how, how Dallas's off season could turn out because back then they used to have Skylar Diggins fifth and then, they went through a rebuild, and now they had its first semifinals appearance since 2009 when they were the Detroit Shock. Um, and for Los Angeles, they are going through, like, a lot of changes as well. Like, we could add into that as well because Los Angeles, they are dealing with, like, a lot of change, like, even though they were this close to make the playoffs last year. Um, so uh, what I was – what I was uh, – I was uh, fascinated to see is how – a lot of players and coaches, and especially the former teams she played, gave a lot of appreciation because of how much impact she has made to the league. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so what was one thing that you heard people say about her that kind of stuck with you and spoke to her legacy as a player? Laisha Clarendon's comment on Instagram really stood out to me, and especially Morgan Tuck used to play playing Connecticut as well so seeing these uh seeing her former teammates comment on her post is like really special and for Kurt Miller when he talked about when he talked about how how he had such a great opportunity to coach Jasmine and especially their relationship it's it appears to be super special yes yes and Kurt Miller also talking about um NECA and her departure too so he he's he's been having a lot of emotional days, I would say. And so mm -hmm. you mentioned you mentioned injury. We got to talk about women's college basketball and the injuries that have faced and plagued so many teams that are great competitors. First up, before we get to a team that's a little bit closer to home for you, let's talk about TCU. So I'm sure people by now have heard that TCU not only held tryouts, but got people to come on to the team with a lot of basketball experience. So Aya, can you tell people a little bit more about that and maybe some things that they missed um, in this story? So when it comes to like TCU women's basketball, they had one of the best wins earlier this week. And Satu Sapoli, who won the most improved player of the year, I wrote a story on that, was there to watch TCU play. Um, one of the questions that I was – I was curious to know about when da when TCU was dealing with a lot of injuries is which players could they bring in and how the team chemistry could work out, not to mention that they posted on the tryout that they must have high school experience. Some of them played some of them played volleyball in the college, so it's going to like be interesting to see how this volleyball basketball connection works out, and especially with the team chemistry. They are. They also lost to Dona Prince with a fractured finger, and uh, losing and losing a, a lot of key players, like Owens, who was out for the season due to an ACL injury. It took a big hit. Mm hmm. Absolutely, it did. And I mean, it was first reported, and what you wrote in your article too is that. 
they were scheduled to play some games that they actually ended up not being able to play. Right. So mm -hmm. I think that this is just such a tough time of year for this to happen. Of course, teams, you have 20, less than 20 games left of the regular season before postseason starts. So for you, how do you feel like this is comparing to the situation with the Arizona Wildcats too? Ooh. So Arizona, they've been hit with a lot of injuries as well. Like not, um, it's really hard to like tell when it comes to University of Arizona women's basketball team, but you can see how they have this fight. Both TCU and Arizona, they continue to show up despite hard hit hardships being hit. So it shows that they they continue to play despite all of this adversity. So writing on these types of injury stories is like is like something that I keep in mind when it comes to writing difficult stories, especially as a junior at the Cronkite School. Um, for TCU, they dealt with a lot of a lot of hits into injuries. And especially for Arizona Wildcats, they were coming off a 2021 NCAA championship run, but even though they fall short to Stanford, you can see how how this program has been improving every year since Adia Barnes took over. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely they have been. And I think you get two big hits like that in Karoma and Tack. And I, I think you mentioned it in your article too that Chroma was having a great year, not on, not just on the off offensive end, right? Like she's averaging mm -hmm. nearly 10 points at that time, but she's also averaging 1.2 steals. So for you, and you're in Arizona, I know it's a different school, but mm -hmm. what do you think that they're going to have to do to regroup and finish this season and try to contend for an NCAA tournament run again? For TCU... Um, there, it's such an interesting question because they had one of the perfect starts in program history and how they've been building up. But the next man up mentality is important because they have to like show up and keep and keep on winning. Even though if they're going to deal with injuries, the one thing to focus on is next man up mentality. Mm -hmm. I cover Arizona State women's basketball team and one of one of the takeaways I learned from Coach Natasha Adair is that she she encourages players to be on this next man up mentality, even though it's going to come at them fast. So it's like an interesting connection to make. It is an interesting connection to make. Next man up mentality is so real. And that comes to even working in sports. And we're actually going to talk about how you adopted that next man up mentality with this conversation with the one and only Diana Tarasi. But first, <laughs> Hungry Root. We got to talk about Hungry Root. It is the easiest way to get fresh, high quality food delivered to your door. They've got healthy groceries and simple recipes all in one place. Just go to hungryroot.com slash locked on to get 40% off your first delivery and get your free veggies. That okay. sounds really good. It sounds good. I'm hungry. I know. And this is this is like lunchtime for you in, in Arizona right now. I'm over here in yeah. New York. So I'm looking. I'm looking for some. <laughs> All right. So Aya, let's talk about your start in sports. You're now hosting a podcast. You're on a podcast. You're writing for the next. But this all started with one very special conversation. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So mm -hmm. I was at the Fry's Trading Places when I was a freshman in high school way back in 2018. I left school early, and then the first thing I did was meet Diana Tarazi. She was at the floral section a year prior. I gave I gifted Tarazi a sand bottle from my parents' home country, which is Amman, Jordan. And my mom told Tarazi that I was the one that I gifted to her, and then she said that she would be making the flowers. And then, and then I kept saying this was the best day of my life. And then one interaction struck to me that got me thinking, what if I do storytelling in a career? So I chose sports journalism. So going back to this conversation, I told Tarazi, wow, yeah. this is the best day of my life. Tarazi laughed and responded, only going to get better when you get these flowers. I mean, looking back at his interaction, which the Phoenix Mercury posted a few years back, this interaction struck out to me because knowing that women's basketball has been on the rise and it's been impressive to see how they continue this growth 
I feel like I want to be a part of this industry and do these unique storytellings across women's basketball. So now I'm in my junior year at Cronkite. I have covered to I have covered my first WNBA game last August when Tarazi scored her 10,000 point, and it feels like a full circle moment. So looking back at this interaction, that really struck to me because because it helped me consider that storytelling is what I love doing for players and coaches. So this, I mean, thinking about this interaction and looking at this video again makes me smile. Yeah. And I mean, she's so right in the way that it only gets better. And I feel like what you're saying too is on a deeper level, it only gets better in this woman's sports world. And I feel like for me, I'm curious what your experiences right now as a sports reporter in college, because for my college experience, it was, I had to advocate. I'm, I'm going to school in New York. And I was like, well, we want people at the Liberty games, right? You know, mm -hmm. and now it's like people are catching on of, all right, well, that's going to be something that we're going to be doing no matter what it's kind of built into the system. And I don't want to be projecting, but do you feel like women's sports is built into the college sports journalism landscape? Um, Absolutely. Right Okay. Absolutely. I'm also a sports reporter for Arizona State women's basketball team with the straight press. So seeing that type of coverage, like especially having that one-on-one -on -one conversation with Coach Adair yesterday when she told me that I do a phenomenal job covering the team, it really fascinated me because for one of my classes for this exercise on interviews, I really like uh, sharing and spreading awareness about women's basketball because I just want I just want the sports fans to make sure that everybody watches women's sports and it's really important for them to get a lot of coverage and credit as they are working so hard to build this community. Yes, and it's great basketball. So take us in to that conversation. Again, a lot of people don't have that experience to have a one-on-one -on -one chat with a coach, especially as a reporter. Mm -hmm. So for you, what goes in to that preparation and to knowing that you're asking the right questions to a coach you're seeing all season? And I'm sure that they're saying a lot of the same things because that's how it is as a coach. But um, yeah, tell us a little bit more about that, that preparation, first of all, and then also how you can manage to be creative in what you ask in such a long season. Um, I'm a sports journalism major with a minor in communication. So doing these two types of major and minor combination is really interesting. So uh, when it comes to learning about the intro to human communication, you would have to know which different channels go into like certain places. So um, asking Coach Adair what she, how she keeps uh, her team in touch through these different channels like social media, it's really like interesting to make that comparison compared to uh, what we do in sports journalism field because it shows because it shows that that sports fans care for this type of coverage across women's basketball. And when I asked about these channels, she made a connection with the two children. So it was like really unique to know. And what, what, which two children? So go to Dara. She said that she has two children. One of them is aged 20, 26 and the other is aged 18. And she calls her, her relationship with the players, a mother figure to them. So it's for one of my classes for sports and media. So do, doing this connection is like pretty interesting. So I could like get a, deeper understanding into interviews and media analysis. Yeah. And it's, it's great too, because you're also getting a masterclass in coaching because you're talking to a coach and it's so interesting. Like, I feel like a lot of the times as people working in sports, we hear a lot of the similar messages from coaches, but mm -hmm. they have to be very strategic in that communication that they have with their players too, because it's mm -hmm. a, not just season long buy-in, it's a year long buy-in it's from the recruiting process. There's so many different elements that go into communicating. And then what you're doing too, is you're able to communicate what you're hearing there with the rest of the world who wants to eat up these stories. So mm -hmm. tell me what you guys record every Monday, your podcast, right? So what has been kind of a theme that you have been addressing a lot, especially this college basketball season? So I am the co-host for Blaze Radio Show, which is known as the wonderful world of women's basketball, which you can follow on 
Twitter, W World of D Women's B Ball, or, or I can say it. Um, but I mean, like doing this type of podcast show with my co host, Zach Bradshaw. Shout out to you, by the way. <laughs> Zach. We have this type of passion for women's basketball. And long story short, we actually met at a Mercury playoff game in 2021 when it was at the Desert Financial Arena and it had to be moved from Footprint Center because of a Disney on Ice, which was a pretty bummer situation knowing that women's basketball, they are trying so hard to promote at big arenas. So um, meeting, like getting to know, to know my co-host is like super special because we have that type of passion for women's basketball. And we also hosted, we also hosted a, a March Madness special last month at Cold Beers and Cheeseburgers, which was a unique experience because we got to talk about who, which teams can win it all. And it was such a, such a fun show to be at, especially at Cold Beers and Cheeseburgers nearby the Chase Field and Footprint Center. So it was like such a, such a fun experience. I would want to do again. Did your predictions come true? I don't remember what my predictions are, but I didn't expect, I didn't expect LSU to like win it all. But yeah. props to Angel Reese, right? Right, one of the most outstanding player. Yeah, props. What a great series to watch too. Mm -hmm. I uh, before we go, we want our ear to the streets of the college sports landscape. So if there's any story that we're missing out on, or you feel like should get a little bit more coverage. The floor is yours. What do you think people should be looking looking for in the women's basketball landscape right now? More stories, like mm -hmm. more stories and more coverage into them because it's important to, for everyone to spread awareness about women's basketball and encourage them to watch more of the sport. I feel like like it's been trendy in the right direction in the last in the last six years, but but there has been like big questions when it comes to when it comes to like social media fans like commenting like negative stuff so i tend not to focus on the negative stuff but rather focus on what we are trying to build because all the networks are here to promote the coverage of women's basketball and all the athletes deserve the flowers especially across women's sports mm, so i would awesome. i would encourage everyone to continue to promote their stories yes all right aya where can people find you? This is sadly the end of our episode. So mm -hmm. we want people to make sure that they can see your work. So where can people find your work? So I have two, I have two um, accounts. So one of them, my Twitter and Instagram pages are AY I Abdeen. So I just do like, instead of the double A, so I just do I Abdeen. A mm -hmm. And then I also have another another account you can find me at aya right sports aya right sports everybody check her out there find me on twitter at gg underscore spear a lot of sports coverage coming there thank you for making that lockdown women's basketball your first or maybe your last listen of the day we're so excited to have you and make sure you check out all the other lockdown network lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24 streaming channel on youtube locked on sports is here today for you 24 7 covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of locked on plus our national shows covering every league go to locked on sports today on youtube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel thank you so much for being here and thank you aya you're welcome <laughs>